My name is Jonathan Skabernak for The Same. I'm here with Lewis Wood, who is running to be your association president for the academic year of 2017-2018. Lewis, thank you for joining me today. No worries. Can you then. go ahead and give us an introduction to you? Sure. So, um, hi, my name is Lewis. Um, I, um, I got to this town three years ago. I'm a third year student now. I study English. Um, and as soon as I got here, within three weeks of being here, I was an executive on a union subcommittee. So my entire academic career, I have spent really engaged with the association. Um, it's something that I absolutely love. Um, when I came to university, I was so shy and I was so nervous, as most freshers are. And I think this town is so special and this community is so enriching. Um, and I think the association plays a massive part in preserving that really special community feeling. I think the best way that I can possibly give back to that is to be the association president, to be the voice of students, to try and make it as good as I can. Um, I think there are improvements that can be made, and I think I'm in a good position to make them and make sure that this town really does stay as a place where students can thrive, both intellectually and socially. So before we get into it, I want to address what happened during nominations. Uh -huh. You submitted your nomination for Director of Wellbeing, the new sabbatical position, but then withdrew a few days later mm -hmm. and then nominated yourself for president. Yep. Can you explain why you made this decision? So. Um, I've been meeting with university officials um, for a really long time during the preparations campaigns, um, just making sure that all the policies that I present are as factually sound or as feasible as they can be. Um, and on the day of my nomination switch, I went to student services and I had a meeting with someone there. Um, and at the end, they said, these policies are incredible, but why are you running for Dowell? Um, and I kind of had to reevaluate it. Um, and kind of ask myself what I really wanted um, from a sabbatical position, what I really cared about pushing. And I think for me, the biggest thing is student advocacy. I think I really, really care about students being as involved in the association as possible and about their views being related to the university in the best way. Um, I think that engagement is what makes us so special. I think this town and this university has a level of student engagement with the association that is far above um, typical levels throughout the US as a country. Um, and I'm really passionate about making sure that that continues. Um, so I just think that the president is the, the role that will help me facilitate my goal of advocating for students on a kind of national platform and to the university. Why are you qualified for the top job in the association? Um, I think part of it is just that I have been involved in pretty much every area of the association at one point. Um, I, so I started out on LGBT as an executive there. I did campaigns and publicity. So for the first two years of my university career, I was um, you know, working with how we present ourselves in association, trying to make sure that we were accessible as possible. Um, and I changed a lot on LGBT. I think the reason why it's so popular now, we just sold out a 720 person ball, is because we've had this focus on accessibility and making sure that people feel welcome. And that's something I want to extend to the association. But my experience is much more varied. I've been on community relations for a year as the student group liaison, so making sure that all the student groups in the association are working with the community um, in tandem with community goals. Um, so I'm very aware of kind of the relationship between our specific groups and the community at large. Um, I've also been on councils for a year as the association LGBT officer. Um, and through that, I was also the SRC senior officer. And what that means is that I sat on um, association board. Um, association board, um, it sounds very jargony, but what it means is that it's the highest level of the association's governance. Um, it's what the president and the other sabbaticals sit on. And it's in charge of the strategic planning, the long-term financial stability of the association. Um, it means that I'm already at the level where these really important decisions are being made. I already understand them. I've got a year of like comprehending and influencing them, I really feel ready to carry on with that as the president in a more responsible way. So give us just a one to two minute overview of why you are the best candidate for president. So I think that, um, I think that all my policies kind of focus invariably on taking student views and making them really well known to the university. Um, it's something that I've just touched on, but I think it's so, so important. Um, and I think that every different area of the kind of president's remit will thrive if we make a more transparent kind of relationship between the students, the sabbaticals, and the university. Um, I think that the president's job is very interpretable. It doesn't really have a set remit. Oh, well, it does, but it's flexible how you work within that remit. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the two things that the president should be doing is 
maintaining the financial long-term stability of the association. I think that's really important and we have to acknowledge that. But I think second to that, the main thing should be advocacy. I think that it's the, one of the only platforms that students have on really high university kind of tiers, um, uni university groups and committees. And I think that there needs to be a com real commitment to representing students there. All right, so let's go into your manifesto in more detail. Your top point on here is accommodation. Mm -hmm. As association president, you'd really be the top student representative for accommodation issues. Take us through some of your solutions for <coughs> students and fighting that accommodation shortage and the accommodation cost in town. Yeah. So accommodation is one of the biggest challenges that we as a student body face, um, and it's addressed every year. Um, but it's so important that we continue to do so. It is an enduring problem and it demands enduring solutions. Um, now in my manifesto, I've split up kind of the way I'm going to approach accommodation into two different sections. There's long-term solutions and uh, short-term solutions. I can't promise you an imminent alleviation of the difficulties that we as a student body face because there are no real short-term mass overhauls that we can do. Um, if I did, I'd be lying, um, and it wouldn't be fair. Um, what I can promise is that in the short term, we will look at as many different avenues for solving this crisis as possible, and I think the best possible one is through university managed properties. Now, university managed properties, um, for kind of those of you that don't know, are um, university owned properties where the university manages it on behalf of the landlord, sets the accommodation prices, which are typically low, um, and commits to a high quality environment. Um, it's one of the best tools we have to make sure that we have um, a large proportion of well-run, low cost and high quality houses in town. I think beyond that in the short term, we're currently rolling out an accommodation survey. I think that this accommodation survey is gonna be incredible in letting us hold letting agencies and landlords accountable for the way that they treat students. It means that we can take direct student feedback and literally give it to the letting agencies and ask them why students are facing the problems they have. Because like we've run reviews of it in town and it is horrific. There are people living with mass mold in their houses and um, major issues that just aren't being fixed. Um, and unless we really address it, letting agencies will continue to take advantage of students. Um, and then the third and kind of a major thing that we really need to address is the HMO ban. Now the HMO ban um, is coming up for review in June. Can you just go ahead and explain what that is? Yeah, yeah. so um, the HMO ban um, is a very complicated kind of, it's been a struggle for a few years, but um, essentially what it means is that new houses or new lettered buildings in town aren't allowed to have more than two people that aren't related living in it. Um, what that means is that students in town are living in houses with a spare bedroom um, and are paying higher rents to kind of compensate for that. Its intention was to make the centre of town a more diverse community of locals and students. What it's done instead is just continue to push locals out and mean that students in the centre of town pay higher prices. Um, now, five council has acknowledged that this HMO ban has not worked. The two communities are still completely segregated. Um, and it all, it has, all it's resulted in is in higher property prices in the centre. Um, what we need to do is fight this HMO ban on every front. There is a review coming up in June. Charlotte's take on it at the minute, the current association president, her take is that we fight it passionately and I'm completely inclined to agree. It's going to take a really solid front from both Charlotte and I and the university to convince the council that this is a bad thing. Um, there is, it's also a very tenuous situation. The council could quite easily um, expand this ban across the entirety of St Andrews in the hope that that will solve the problems that the first ban didn't. Um, rather than solving any problems for students, all that will do is exacerbate our situation because it will mean that there will instead be more beds across the entirety of the town which aren't being used. There will be higher accommodation prices across the entirety of the town. It will be a nightmare. So it's really important that this is a situation that's handed with diplomacy and confidence and commitment. Um, June is the handover month when Charlotte will be handing over to a new president, so it's going to take commitment 
from the kind of president-elect before they take on their term. And I'm fully prepared to get on board with that, get engaged in these negotiations as soon as these elections are over, and make sure that we are providing the best possible case that we can against this HMO ban. Um, in the long term, though, I think the priority has to be negotiating with university court members um, about accommodation redevelopment schemes. Um, redevelopment is a university priority. Um, there are incoming students in mass numbers. Um, we are increasing our student intake. Um, we need to make sure that in the accommodation development plans in the future, university court members have always got in mind um, low-cost, high-quality housing. So let's move on to your next large point, which is your efforts to help improve external relations and mm -hmm. how you will represent students outside of the university. Yeah. You have four main points within this section. Um, you're going to work closely with the principal's office, and you are also going to liaise with other Scottish sabbatical teams. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how this will help students? So um, I think there's a lot at risk with Brexit. Whatever stance you take on Brexit, it's going to have a big impact on the higher education sector. Um, it's holding certain things to ransom at the minute, which we as a student body would really suffer from losing. Um, one of these is the Erasmus scheme. So Erasmus is a EU initiative. Um, it gives us huge amounts of funding to send students away on a year abroad, um, semesters abroad, things like that, um, which is kind of a crucial part of our foreign languages department. Um, if we lose that funding, we lose the capacity to send a huge amount of our students abroad, um, which is a massively detrimental kind of is a massively detrimental thing for the student body to suffer. It's so enriching when students go abroad. Now the proctor is leading the charge against us pulling out of this Erasmus programme. Um, and I think it's going to take a very concentrated effort from the proctor, the principal's office and the Scottish sabbaticals to kind of really convince um, national politicians that this is something that we're really dedicated to. Um, because unless we're creating this forum um, where our voices are heard um, and navigating these national politics with a really strong united front, they won't take it into account. Um, so I think we just really have to engage on these issues, especially also in relation to tuition fees. Yeah, so tuition fees are free for Scottish students, mm -hmm. but they do affect <coughs> English students and they do affect students who come from overseas, whether that be mainland Europe or mm -hmm. in America. How will you work to represent students' interests when it comes to tuition fees? Yeah. So tuition fees, again, are a really expansive and complicated problem because of all the variants. Um, so EU fees currently pay, uh, EU residents currently pay Scottish fees. Um, uh, the rest of the UK um, pay significantly higher, and of course that might increase um, with the HE governance bill that's going through. Um, and there are international students who, again, pay much more consistently um, increased prices. Um, I think that to address each one is incredibly complicated. I think what I have to make clear is my stance on tuition fees, and that is that I think they have to be kept at an absolute minimum. I think we've done a very good job at the minute in setting a set fee for international students with tuition fees. I think that's a really helpful thing. But I think there is still a very strong possibility that they will increase. Um, there is a very strong possibility that EU nationals are going to start having to pay um, the same tuition fee as international students. Um, I think there has to be um, a student advocate for consistently low fees at these high levels of the university. Um, because there is an incentive in the university to accept that extra money. Um, it makes kind of financial sense. Um, so I have, to, like, I have to be there, a president has to be there, who can really make sure that they are considering students and their financial um, situations. Transparency is a major concern of many students at the university mm -hmm. because they often don't see or hear about or understand what the union and the association is doing. Can you talk about how you're going to reach out to students and make sure that they're being represented, but also that they know how they're being represented? Yeah. So um, transparency is like a huge point uh, for me in this election because I think it kind of harks back to why I'm running. I think that engagement is so beneficial for students. Um, so I think that um, the sabbatical team do an excellent job every year, but I think it's very easy to get kind of wound up in the job, it's very easy to become a staff member and stop being a student. Um, 
I think one of the benefits of me running is that I still have a year of academia left. So I'm always going to be a student throughout this year of me going away. Um, so I'm naturally going to kind of feel that student interest in everything I advocate for. With regards to how we can um, kind of increase transparency and how we can get students to engage, I think we really need to be creating more forums for us to hear from students. We're never going to be able to really represent student opinions if we're not providing them with an opportunity to tell us. Um, at the minute, unless you really like want to come to the first floor of the union and go and talk to the sabbaticals in the office, which can be quite intimidating, or drop them an email, which again, kind of is intimidating in its own way, there's not many opportunities where you can actually approach the president or a sabbatical um, and tell them your concerns, ask them about their current policies. I think we need to have an open question time within the union, um, maybe bi-monthly, um, where you can come, where you can hold sabbaticals accountable for the work they're doing, where you can ask them questions about what they're currently doing. Um, I think we also need to be going into halls and engaging with first year students. It's how we get people involved in the association. I think it's beneficial to them to be involved in the association and I think it's really important that they see that the university is listening to what they want, um, that there are representatives for them in the university. Um, and then I think we just need to kind of advertise sabbatical activities more. We have um, the monthly email but it doesn't really break down the day to day activities of what your sabbaticals are doing. Um, so I think we really need to let students know you know, what we're here for, why we're doing the things we're doing, um, and that we're advocating for them. As the Association LGBT Plus Officer, you sat on both the Students' Representative Council and the Student Services Council, mm -hmm. and you also were the SRC Senior Member. So you have a lot of experience with that legislation, legislative process. Can you talk about your plan for Student Council reform? Because I see in here that you really focus in on transforming it from more of a bureaucracy to a debating body that can help represent mm -hmm. students. So I think that um, Student Council is, I mean, it's quite widely mocked within the university as something where students take themselves way too seriously. And in some ways, um, it kind of does. We have very rigid standing orders. Um, which are full of technical jargon. Um, I remember going to a student council meeting before I was on councils and thinking, like, this is so inaccessible. Like, I can't understand a single thing that's happening. Um, and it is. And they're the people that we're asking to represent students, and students can't even fully understand what's happening. Um, so I think it's really crucial that um, we reform that so that students can come along, so that they can engage in the debates, so that they can make sure that the people that are representing them um, are really listening to their voices and carrying them out. Um, so I think there are ways to do this. Um, I think the first thing is to make student councils an event. We don't currently advertise them properly. I think if we make them an event literally on Facebook, we advertise it as an event every week, we try and get students coming along, they can see both the complexity of what happens and how committed people are to making sure that they are listing students and working for them. Um, <clears throat> I think at the start of every meeting we need to have a point where, or just a moment when we don't really adhere to the standing orders so that people that do come that don't really understand the procedure of councils can engage in a very, very informal way um, without being given speaking rights or having to ask in a really intimidating way if they can ask a question. Um, there needs to be a moment when councillors can just converse with the people that come, listen to what they want, and then act upon it. And what do you think this will result in? Do you think students will actually then engage with this process? I hope so, because it's there for them. Um, the Students' Representative Council is the um, legally recognised body um, of the association. It's what we need um, to survive. Um, so I think students, we can like teach students that. I think a lot of students don't even know it. Um, I think they don't know how much power it possesses and how much power they possess as part of this machine. Um, they can come and they can propose motions and they can change things that they don't like. And I think we should be giving students the opportunity to do that. Um, there's a misconception that if you're not a counselor or if you like don't come into the association every day, you can't really change anything. But it's just false. You know, you can change anything about this place. It's owned by students. It is the Students' Association. Um, so I think it's just about letting people know that they can really have an impact um, and getting them in that process. Okay, so let's move to your final point of your campaign platform, which is widening access. Again, uh, an issue that is ever-present in students' mind, especially with the way that St. Andrews is perceived. Mm -hmm. How will you fight to widen access for all students as association president? Cool. 
So um, in February, um, statistics came out that said that um, six of every ten students accepted here are private school students. Um, now that's the second worst statistic in the country after Oxford, um, which is a major publicity image for us. Um, now, what I'm not saying is that we shouldn't be accepting private school students. We should be taking the best and the brightest students. Um, we're a very academic community, and I feel like we should sustain that. What I think we should be doing is going into schools where students aren't encouraged to apply to university, or where there's no focus on getting students to institutions like St Andrews, and we should be changing that and encouraging those students at state schools who are very intelligent to come here. I think um, the image problem that we have um, contributes to a lot of the welfare issues at the university. Um, I feel like even students within our community, community view us as posh or exclusive. Um, and that's not the experience that I've had. Um, but I know student services do have an issue with that. Um, and I think it's a sentiment we really need to change. I think we're um, doing a disservice nationally by... Um, neglecting state schools and state school students and I think there are ways we can address how we encourage them to apply. So um, one of the first ways on a very local kind of scale is to encourage subcommittees to get out into schools. Um, we don't get nearly as many applications from Fife as you'd think, um, especially state schools within Fife. I think we're viewed as very posh and very exclusive. Um, and I think if we're sending out mermaids and LGBT and our really strong subcommittees that do really great work, um, and we're teaching these students not only kind of activities relating to the Pacific subcommittee, but that we are a really fun body, that we are engaging with them, that we want them to come here, I think it sends out a really strong message welcoming them. Now, Charlotte, the outgoing president, has also started a widened access program this year, but it's only just kind of coming into effect, and I think it's very um, tenuous, and it needs a new president that is committed to making sure it kind of continues. Um, her kind of idea is that she works with the ambassadors, um, and she makes sure that they can go out nationally into schools um, and get them encouraging people to apply. It's something that Oxbridge do, it's something that a lot of other great institutions do, um, and I think we need to kind of follow in their footsteps and make sure that we're getting our name out there. Um, and I think it's very easy, it just needs a lot of commitment from a president who makes it one of his priorities, um, one of their priorities. But. As association president, you will be leader of the sabbatical team. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to resolve differences and make sure that the entire team is cohesively working for students? Well, I mean, first off, I'd kind of dispute that. I think that the sabbatical team is a very cooperative body. I don't think it has a leader. I think it just has um, now six people on it with very different remits. Um, I think the president is more of an official title that has to happen. Um, it's, the president's role is effectively director of communications. Um, so I don't think it necessarily leads a sabbatical team. Um, but kind of just to answer your question anyway, <laughs> I think that I have very good experience with people um, I kind of pride myself on my management with LGBT. I think I've had a very strong subcommittee and I think we've got so much done. Um, a group of 14 of us have run 68 events this year. And I think that's because um, we've been very organized, we've been very focused, um, we've all gotten along very well. And I think I have those personable skills um, to kind of manage a team, to be diplomatic. Um, and I think that's so crucial with the sabbatical team because we all do have such overlapping we met. Um, for example, one of the things that Dowell is going to have to really work on this year is on um, sexual and mental health. Now, in order for the Dowell to do that, it's going to take a lot of work with the president's communications with external bodies such as the council, um, such as the university at its high levels. Um, so it is very cooperative and yeah, I'm, I'm just very keen to work together. I think I have those people skills. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to include about yourself, your campaign, what you stand for, so mm -hmm. that the voters know? Um, I think there's a lot more right, to my manifesto, to what I want to run on. I have a lot of ideas about alumni engagement, and I'm very passionate about making sure that the association works with the community as well as it can do. Um, I'm a full-time resident of this town. I live here all the way through the summer, um, and I see what this town is like both with and without students. Um, and I think it's really important that the members of the community feel like we as a university and as an association value them. Um, but I think um, kind of what I'd like to leave it on is that um, I, I'm running because I care so much about this association. I, um, it's kind of 
it's kind of sad, but I, I absolutely love it. Um, I think it's so incredible and it has such transformative powers. And I know that it has changed my life for the better. Um, I think it does have that power to really change um, the student experience. And I just really want that to like, carry on. I think there's no better way I could give back than to making sure that students have as great a time here as I've had. Um, I really want that to continue. Well, thank you, Lewis. Yeah. My name is Jonathan Skavernak for The Saint. Make sure you visit www.thesaint-online.com for more information on the 2017 Student Association elections.